Hi folks, quick disclaimer before we get into this video. I have had a working relationship with at least one of the companies whose products I discuss in this video. Technically speaking, I could be biased, right? And uh, this video is not really a review video. It's more of a vlog of me building a system, but uh, I just wanted to mention that up front. Um, so if you're having any doubts about what I'm saying or whatever, just consider me biased when you watch this video. Um, and that's all I wanted to mention up front. All right, thank you very much. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? I haven't built a PC in 15 plus years, back when they were made out of water and stone. Why don't we build a modern one? Let's go to it. What do you say? Come on down. Are you up for it? I'm up for it. Let's do it. Thumbs up. Let's go. Surfing system building. Ready to go. Ready to happen. Let's make it happen. Good stuff is happening here. Yes, we're ready. How do we do this? <laughs> Okay, to be totally honest, I've been doing PC part picker for the last couple of years, dreaming of a mini ITX system. And I kept putting it off. Every time it was going to be optimum. The end of one year it was going to be optimum. The end of another year, what was it? Uh, the end of 2019, well, you know, it was just not the best time. And then I waited till, I said, let's wait till 2020. Christmas season, holiday season 2020. Well, uh, Pandemic, of course, right? So I decided, oh, we better push it down the road. So here we are at the end of 2021. Life ain't perfect, but I'm like wanting to get past sluggishness when I'm coming home on the weekend with a bunch of wildlife photos and I want to go through them. I don't want to wait 20 years to load a photo. I also use DaVinci Resolve and I like to use Fusion, but Fusion is really good if you can learn how to use Fusion and you can really best learn how to use Fusion if you can actually use it without waiting a long time every time you want to do something with it. So I decided I need a desktop computer and they've got these nice small ones, mini ITX, and I like that because I don't want a big mainframe in my small place. And I saw some builds with these I've had my eye on for a couple years and I decided to craft one like this. Got this workstation GPU here, which I'm really happy to try out. I want something durable and something that can do a lot of the motion graphics. I do not play a lot of games these these days. If I play games, it's kind of like Pac-Man, Legacy, whatever, right? Like Space Invaders, you know, show me Command and Conquer 1995 and I'll play a game. But first person, all this, no, 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 I get dizzy with that. I need to take drama mean when I have use those things. It's just not my thing. It's for the kids. Maybe it's for the adults. I don't know. It's just not my thing. My thing is serious workstation GPU and Small size is good. Yes, let's make it small and compact where it can fit in the corner. RGB is good. I like RGB. RGB and mini ITX where we need to put more heat, as much heat as possible in there. I'm kidding, kidding. Uh, but this is a very meshy case. So I'm really interested in trying this meshy case. Anyway, this is gonna be an adventure. Don't expect me to be an expert in this because I'm not an expert in this. Last time I did it, I told you it was 15 plus years ago when you could go to Fry's Electronics and buy everything and then go home and put it together. And when I put it together, it was kind of like a big spacious tower thing. And I didn't really worry about cable management and the fans were like, it wasn't like the tower fans they have today. And certainly liquid cooling was not a common thing. So we live in a different world today in terms of building PCs. It's actually very exciting. And uh, I just thought, like, hey, it's time to upgrade. It's time to be able to use DaVinci Resolve without waiting around. And let's go and 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 take a step. So here we go. We start off with a Masterbox NR200P Mini ITX case, which will contain this Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Impact Mini DTX motherboard, powered by a Corsair SF750 SFX power supply. At the heart of everything, we've got a Ryzen 5950X CPU with 16 cores, 32 threads, all cooled by the Scythe Fuma 2 Tower CPU air cooler. Bringing welcome luxury to content creation and photo editing, we've got the AMD Radeon Pro W6800 Workstation GPU. Extending out that luxury, we've got 64 gigabytes of G-Skill RGB RAM and a 2 terabyte Samsung SSD 970 EVO Plus NVMe M2 inside this blurry and dented box that you see. Hey folks, quick insert into this video. As you saw in the beginning of the video, I chose the Scythe 
a Fuma 2 CPU air tower cooler. That was not my first choice. My first choice was the Dark Rock Pro 4 because the initial chassis that I had in mind was the 2150. But when I went to go buy all the parts, the 2150 was not available. So after a couple of years of waiting to do this build, I really didn't want to have anything else delay things. So I went ahead and got the NR200P and figured I'd just go with that. And what I did is in my excitement, I just assumed that NR200P must certainly be at least the same size or a little bit larger than the 2150. And I was wrong. <laughs> So 2150 has actually got a little more clearance apparently so. So other people had been successful with builds in the NR200P using the Scythe Fuma 2 CPU tower air cooler, the one I'm ultimately going to use in here. But I didn't want to throw out the footage that had the Dark Rock Pro in it from when I was initially building the system. So I've kept that in here and I just wanted to mention that up front so you're not confused uh, when you see that fan. My using the Scythe Fuma 2 in the final build says nothing about the Dark Rock Pro, which is a beautiful fan. I simply chose whatever would fit in to the NR200P with the right level of clearance so I could put that front panel on. So this is the Coolmaster NR200P. You can really take off all the sides and they just snap right off. Very mesh, lots of air. The top comes off as well. Some USB ports and stuff on the side. I'm not gonna go into all the details on this particular case because there's lots of really good review videos out there on this particular case. This Coolmaster case has this glass panel. Let's actually see two fans that come with this unit stuff under here there's some ties and screws vertical mount uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do things in that regard so it comes with these two fans you know sounded like they were okay maybe I'll experiment with these versus the be quiet fans I'm in the midst of building this motherboard I mean look at that that's pretty fantastic <laughs> it's just amazing what they do last time I built <laughs> a system the motherboard was probably the M2. Okay, so we'll take that sticker and then screw this bracket in. Okay, Dark Rock Pro installed with the fans installed. The motherboard is installed. External audio connector. Took off this cover off of there and then I took this screw off and took this thing out and then I plugged in the audio connector. I ended up hooking in old school RGB, addressable RGB. Quick recap. I looked at the motherboard manual. I looked at the cooler manual. I looked at the case manual, the Coolmaster. I would just page through the different manuals. I bounce to different manuals depending on kind of where I'm at in the process. It's been a long, long day and I'm a little wiped out, but I'm kind of having fun doing it. So it's kind of cool. Let's go to the next step then. All right, so it's almost four o'clock in the morning. The thing is set up, it's running. This was just really exciting to kind of get into and everything. The one thing though, is that the clearance of this cooler is not less than this. So it's not, I can't put the panel on. I, I was originally going to use the, the 2150, TU150. I couldn't get any. They were not in stock. I thought this was bigger than the 2150. That's the only issue though. I mean, right now it's running fine. So I can't wait to start using it. Anyway, I'm excited, but I'm just exhausted. I'm crazy exhausted, but it was just really good. I paid a little tuition here. I don't know if I'm really going to build a whole lot, but um, uh, I really had a need here for this and uh, it's just exciting. So I can't wait to start using it. The Scythe Fuma 2 got some really good reviews. It will fit in here. Okay, here we are. It's up and running. Uh, it actually works nicely. The mesh fits here. Tempered glass fits right here. I, I'm so excited. I've been waiting for more than two years now to build this system and finally I've done it. Well, hello. Uh, this is the uh, unit and I had it up and running. I had DaVinci, I installed DaVinci Resolve. I even opened up DaVinci Resolve and used it a little bit. Then I started installing like some photo editing apps. And I think there was a browser open or something and I double clicked in an edit field. And all of a sudden the computer went clink, clink, you know, like blink, like, like just 
like the monitor blinked off and the, the computer blinked off, it rebooted. I thought I saw some bio screen for a second on the first boot attempt, but then it like rebooted again or something. It happened really quickly. And then, uh, forgive me by the way, I've been, I haven't, you know, I haven't really taken a shower after taking a nap and I've been kind of working on this all day. Not this problem, I've been kind of continuing to set up the system and really start to use it today and stuff. So it's Saturday and I just, it's the first moment I've had. I was working all week, so. So now I'm getting, I, I got a couple Q codes. I think I got Q code 56 first, but I'm not sure. Uh, it might've been I got ED first, then 56. Now I'm consistently getting 90. <laughs> Based on what I'm reading online, 90 is not a good code to get, but nobody's really definitive about it. Some One person said that they actually downgraded their BIOS to an older one and it worked. I tried that once already. I went one back and no dice. I'm still getting 90. I'm just going to actually fire this up right now to see what I get. It's been off for a little bit, but it's been on for a good portion of the day. I mean, I was copying some files and stuff and I wasn't particularly pushing it hard um, when it turned off. Um, uh, I, in fact, when I used DaVinci Resolve, you would say I was kind of pushing it more. By the way, that's my laptop, so it doesn't really count, right? Like that's, this is connected directly to this. Okay, let me, let me turn this on. Yeah. And then it stops at 90. Yeah, here, here's one that kind of matches mine. Q code 90 white lead on. Uh, but this is not a mini. This is a Crosshair 3 or 8 Hero. I have a Crosshair 8 Mini. And it's here. And this is back in December 2020. Let's clear the CMOS. And then this one, Crosshair 8 non-Wi-Fi. I got it. My had, uh, had to RMA my board, not to mention, while running the board with my CPU, it killed the CPU as well. Not sure how that happened. I can try to uh, flash with the... Um, with this new BIOS here. I was really enjoying it, you know, and then I opened up a pretty involved DaVinci Resolve project I have, and that that was working great. So, and it's been running, nothing different was happening. It was very calm actually, and had been on for a bit, and calm, pretty much been on for the last several hours. I mean, it's not a, it can't be a thermal thing because it was at the least thermal kind of driving thing. So something, something went on and, uh, I don't know, but uh, for me, uh, I'm a little bit of a bad mood right now because of this, but uh, so I'm trying to be tempered about it. But I would say uh, if you're spending your entire Saturday night downgrading firmware and looking at QCO 90, it ain't a whole lot of fun. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not I mean, I, I you know, s same issue. What fixed it? What's the fix? Well, I did some electrical testing on the PSU and it wasn't supplying proper voltage. Well, that's pretty good. This guy's damn good, man. He got out his little measuring device. And sh this is a Corsair 750, you know, SFX though. It's supposed to be pretty damn good. It sounds like there's a lot of reasons why you can get stuck at 90. And I, I'm not thinking that the Corsair is a problem. Could be. Hey, how's it going? I'm really glad I played a lot of Operation when I was younger. Okay, so I measured. I, I, these are the PCI power connectors, PCIe power connectors that uh, were powering the GPU, and they measure 12 volts. So I mean, all the all the you know 12 volt and common. You know, I checked even the common lines and the X run. So power supply looks good. You know, I expected it to be, but somebody online said something about you know it could have gone bum. Anyway. micro ATX uh, MOBO here and an extra processor and I picked up an inexpensive GPU that I could use for drop-in replacement testing. That is going to hopefully help us isolate what the issue is uh, with this Q-Code 90 white lead VGA indicator. So let's dig in and see what we can find out. So I think you maybe have to go back and forth. That's not good. Why did that pop out? Let me just put that in there. So that looks very clean. I don't see any issue. There is a little bit of bleeding on the side there, right? You see right there, but it's not touching any electronics. And on the back side here, same thing. I don't see any issues. Let's go to all sides here. There's that. 
And there's, there's that. Yeah, they're, they're just a little bit bleeding there, but it's not anywhere near the uh, components. Anywhere where it's, it's potentially, you know, would be here. And I don't know if that could cause an issue, but we're about a millimeter away. So I don't know if there could be some capacitance there or something. There's no conductivity with just the paste, which is good. Okay, folks, we have the MSI B550M VDH motherboard, a motherboard we can use for testing components on, hopefully known to be good, but that's this first test we're doing. We have a different CPU. This is the Ryzen 7 5800X, so hopefully, again, known to be good. So then we also have just a very plain old school GPU here that has like an HDMI output. We're just gonna fire this up here to see if uh, it works, and if it works, then we're gonna start swapping stuff from the build into here to kind of see if we can find out something here. Let's power this on here. So we're gonna power this on and I'm gonna short out uh, six and eight on JFP1, that's the power button. I don't think there's a power button on this motherboard. So here goes. And I'm seeing a CPU light, which is normal during boot. And now it's gone to VGA and now it's gone to the boot cycle and we have a post and BIOS, which is wonderful. All right, great. So we have a working system here. Let's start with the GPU from the other system and put it in here and see what happens. All right, folks, we have the known good system here with the GPU. This is the one question mark at this point. So I have a little bit of gaffer's tape here because we're not in a chassis and this is very heavy and I kind of want it to be uh, staying vertical. I don't want it to rely on the slot uh, for support. So we're gonna power this up. So let's hit the power button. Okay, I see the CPU light on and now we go to VGA and it gets past VGA and we got post, which is wonderful, which is wonderful. Okay, guess what? I think this means the W6800 is still kicking, which is good. This is the 5950X. Let's turn on and see what happens. We're going to hit the power button, pin six and eight. There we go. Uh, we have a CPU light. That's normal for this stage. Uh, it should take a few seconds and it should go on to uh, the next set of lights. Okay, it's not moving past CPU, so. Okay, I've put the legacy GPU in here. This has the 5950X, which just now did not work. So we're just gonna, we just swapped out the GPU just to be on the safe side. I don't expect any difference here. Let's give it a, let's give it a roll. And we're gonna go and hit the power button here. All right, well, uh, we're not past CPU on this. So uh, I think the CPU is had it. Known good CPU Ryzen 7 5800X. We've got the Crosshair 8 impact motherboard, uh, the RAM, all known good stuff here. Here's the GPU that we've already tested in the other motherboards working fine. Okay, we're gonna press the power button and let's give it a shot now. We got post. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so we have the 5950X in here. And, uh, everything else in here is good because I was seeing VGA light um, along with the Q code 90. I'm curious if I still see that. And that's curious because the other motherboard showed a CPU light and I wanna see what this one shows. So let's see. This motherboard gives us a handy dandy little power switch. So I'm gonna press it. Here we go. We've got uh, amber or orange, sorry. I think that's orange, red, white. That's the VGA light. And it's, it's at white. What is the Q code here? Yeah, we got a Q code 90 with a white VGA LED, which apparently doesn't mean VGA. It apparently means CPU. We have the Ryzen 7 5800X in here now. white that's our vga light we go to green right away 
and uh, we have posts. For, for me, the takeaway is that when you have two different indicators, um, it, you know, in this particular case, neither one may be telling you exactly what the issue is, but may be hinting at what you need to do to figure out what the problem is. From what I've seen online, when people experience both, both of those indicators, they usually have to go and resort to some sort of swap testing to kind of narrow down which part um, got affected by whatever it is that affected the part. Here we are a week later. I've been using this build for the last week with the Ryzen 7 5800X in here. It's been beautiful. I really love it uh, with that 5800X in here. Guess what? The Ryzen 9 5950X arrived and it came here on Friday. So I'm actually anxious to swap these two out. But I have to say, this has been so great with the 5800X in here and all the cable management was done and everything that I'm a little bit like, you know, do you want to, you know, mess with this or just leave it as is. And it's really tempting. I mean, it's been wonderful, very luxurious to work with this for the last week. But I do have this processor here and we've come this far. So I really think that means it's deserving of us swapping it out, giving that 5950X a try in here in this small case, seeing how everything works. <laughs> it up and see how it goes. Well, here we go. We got the 5950X in here. I'm really excited to actually see how well the 5950X does. I have a DaVinci Resolve Fusion Clip that I worked on a couple of years ago that for me is relatively involved. I'm not saying it's the most advanced DaVinci Resolve Fusion Clip, but for me, it was like breaking some new barriers because I was learning a lot of things and there was a lot to it. It was kind of an involved tutorial to come up to speed on it. That clip takes about four and a half to five minutes to render on my older laptop. Now my laptop's five years old, but comparing it to this is valid here. It's about me assessing where I'm coming from and what I'm gonna be using in the home workflow. This is not a commentary on the laptop. The laptop's five years old and it's really underpowered for DaVinci Resolve and I think did fairly well with DaVinci Resolve considering, you know, where, where it stacks up in terms of, you know, being old hardware and, and this kind of thing. If I render that same Fusion Clip that takes about five minutes, four and a half, five minutes on my laptop, that five-year-old laptop, and I render it on here, it's done in 85 seconds. That's less than a third of the time it takes takes on the laptop. All right, everybody, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Be well, be safe. Uh, holidays are coming up, so enjoy your holidays. And uh, until the next video, take care, be well. All right, thanks, bye.